Hello there, this is David Allen for the amazing iPad website. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Bento for iPad. Let's get up and running with this database for the iPad. Now Bento is not a relational database, but it is sort of a database that is relational because you can link it to other libraries. And the library is what Bento calls a database. Let's get started. First of all, tap on the button that says Libraries in the top left-hand corner. And then when we've done that, we'll see a number of templates that we can choose from. We scroll through those in the album view type of view of these templates. And when we've got one that we like, we can click on Create a Library. Straight away, your Bento is ready to go. And on this occasion, I've chosen the Recipes Library. There are a number of other possibilities in there, but Recipes look good to me. We've got three recipes in there already, which gives you an idea of how you fill in the fields to uh, populate all the data for your recipe. You've got your preview, which give, lets you put in a photograph, and you've got descriptions so you can say exactly uh, where the recipe came from and a number of other things. We can do extra fields with this recipe later if we wish, no problem at all. If you want to add another recipe straight away without making any changes to the database, just press on the plus button in the menu bar at the top there and away you go. If you're looking at the, your recipes there and you want to see some more detail then you can tap on that little diagonal two headed arrow that you can see over the right hand side there and you can choose to show how many lines you want to show. And if you'd rather not do that but leave it just so it shows a little bit then you can tap on full screen and it will show you all of the detail, the text within that dialog box. As you can see from the bottom there, it is also possible to have fields which you choose from a list. Like I said before, if you want to see all of what's in the directions for your recipe, just tap on full screen and you're away. Now, if you don't like the theme that you chose when you first started with your database, you can go back into this again and change the theme. You can choose whichever one you want again and start fresh with the look of it. Just tap on done when you're ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new field to our database and what I want to do is I want to have a field which looks at the last time I used the recipe. So in this case I need a date. So I select the field type there and then I click on create. As you can see we've got other fields available. We could choose time, duration, currency, media, text, number, in our new field that we've chosen, which requires a date put in there, if you tap on the button where it says 11, you'll get some numbers in the in that area there where you type in the numbers. If you tap on where it says December or deck, then you get to choose from the months of the year. Very quick and easy putting in data. When you've got your data on the database on your iPad, then it's quite likely that you're going to want to sort of move your data across to the Mac, and it's very easy to synchronize your data. When you've got your data over on your Mac, and you want to get those data showing in the forms, you'll have to actually add those fields to your forms before you can see them. But the data is all there, and it has been synchronized. Also, when you're looking at your data on the iPad, you don't get the list view. So if you moved stuff across to the iPad for the Mac, you get some extra ways of viewing your data. On the iPad, you just get to view it one record at a time. And again, although the data has come across from the iPad, it has been synced across, you do actually have to put a tick into the box there to get it showing in the list view. Now, Bento 4 iPad is a great looking database and you can use it to do an awful lot of different things. It's very versatile. And I like the way that it links into your Apple applications, such as the calendar and the address book data. And although it's not the most powerful of databases, it does what it does do pretty well. So I would actually recommend it as a good way of doing database work on the iPad. There are alternatives. You could have a look at the Hand Dbase, and that one looks quite good. I've actually tried it out. It's eight euros to buy. And then there's the iPad database, which is a very simple one. But uh, if you're looking for something that does give you a list view, then you do get a list view with that iPad database. So this is David Allen for Amazing iPad. And if you haven't subscribed yet, tap on that subscribe button in YouTube. 
and uh, why not click the like button as well. If you want to go and find out more about various things to do with the iPad, have a look at theamazingipad.com and also I've got a new website out called nostylus.com. That one's all about different touchscreen devices and not just about the iPad. So, bye-bye now.